So I'm naturally, sure. because he wasn't closing you, you didn't sign up. I did sign up. Oh, you did sign up. Yeah. Okay, so, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely works. The really smart guys and savvy vendors these days are doing exactly what you said. They're, they're tipping the whole thing on its head. Yep. They're coming at it from the buyer perspective. They're educating, they're helping. You know, I, I, I was told in my you know, very first week of sales in, I think I started in 1989, yeah. my first job, I was told always be closing. The ABC of selling, always be closing. Mm -hmm. And that, that denotes pushing your buyer through, you know, pushing them to buy something when they're not quite ready. Mm -hmm. Now it's all about always be helping. So yeah. we've gone from ABC to ABH. Well, it's interesting. At the event, you spoke about having received the sales calls for, uh, from the guys at HubSpot after you downloaded a white paper and they were mapping your buying journey, obviously, yep. identify where you were. Yep. What did you say about the salesperson that uh, gave you a call? I can't remember the gentleman's name. Yes. But uh, your initial impression? Yeah, look, that was fascinating to me as a, a long-term salesperson yep. with all of those bad habits that we just talked about. Yep. Um, I took my sales cap off and I became a buyer. Mm. So for my business, I was looking at marketing automation. I'd heard about HubSpot, yeah. um, downloaded a white paper, as you said, and I got a phone call from a gentleman named Jack Doran yeah. uh, the next day. And Jack's an inbound marketing specialist. Okay. And the phone call was really refreshing. It was Jack's basically just educating me about inbound marketing. I didn't know a lot about it, but there was, no, there was nothing sales about that call. Okay. He didn't ask for a compelling event. He wasn't after budget. He didn't want to know the time frames. He was just helping me understand about inbound marketing. And it was really refreshing. And uh, you know what subsequently happened in the following months is that, that that model continued where HubSpot was just interested in educating me as a buyer mm. and taking me on their, on their journey. Yeah. Um, and it was, you know, there was no push selling. There was no uncomfortable feeling like I'm being sold to. It was just a really smart and look, that's the model for the future. Okay. The sale is what happens when you are immersed in helping your buyer. Sure. You know, so if you, just, if you just do all those things the way you should, the sale comes naturally at the end anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I think for salespeople, one of the challenges is they want to do that. And, and I think you know, the, the better ones are definitely doing it. Um, but then the numbers are still being crunched with regard to their targets. That's not going to stop anytime soon in reality. Um, organizations you know, need that commercial outcome and salespeople need to justify their position. Um, so I, I guess with that, the salesperson wants to focus on quality and focus on the customer. I've, I'm finding that often, often it's coming at the cost of, of numbers though. Mm -hmm. So they are, it needs to be a, balanced, uh, a balancing act still, doesn't it, in terms of having the right number of customers because you can educate one customer and, and play that perfectly, mm. but they just may not buy mm. and because they the, uh, may not have budget, whatever it might be. Mm. Um, it, it, what are you seeing going on with your customers around balancing between the numbers game and, and uh, you know, following the right methodology? Well, look, I've got a fairly black and white view of things. Okay. I think to your, to your opening point there about how they're measured and managed, mm. I don't believe that the future will allow an incongruous situation whereby salespeople are driven for revenue attainment yep. when the buyer actually just wants an outcome. That's the basis of the embedded distrust that we have between the buyer and it's the salesperson. It's alignment of, of interest, I guess. It's yep. alignment of interest. Yep. Salespeople, when they are um, measured solely on revenue attainment and quota and commissioned, mm -hmm. um, that creates a misalignment. And everyone knows that. We all know that intuitively as buyers. We're all buyers. Yeah. So what I'm seeing now in, in um, some of the really savvy vendors that are moving away from commissions um, and also moving away from quota, they're realizing that actually there's a whole range of other KPIs that can be put in place for salespeople mm -hmm. that are aligned to the buyer. So things like um, not just customer sat and NPS scores, but things like lifetime customer value, uh, retention rates, paying the salesperson on the second and third sale rather than the first. Okay. So, you know, creating customer loyalty, creating repeat business, customer advocacy. Yep. These are the, the measurements that the really savvy vendors are now moving towards. Yeah, and, and I, I guess the, the opportunity is definitely there now that they're in a software as a service model, they're paying by the month. Yes. So it's very easy for them to, for the likes of, let's say, a Salesforce, uh, to draw alignment be, be, between uh, remunerating or incentivizing that salesperson around the second or third or retention of the customer yes. because they continue to pay. Um, does that reign true in, in most industries that aren't, even if it's not software as a service and so much 
so many industries are going towards that sort of model. But for those that aren't, yep. do, you, do you see that realistically that they can uh, shift that focus from quota attainment and new business? They can and they have to. Yeah, okay. Because what I did for most of my career was, when I look back now, somewhat embarrassing. Yeah. Um, we would sell software. We would say, there you go, Mr. Customer, there's the software. See yeah. you later. On to the next one. Mm. Um, those days are over. The ultimate aim is to provide the customer with the most delightful experience they can find yep. uh, so that they keep coming back to you. So whether you're a SaaS-based company um, on a consumption-based model or you're still using the old perpetual license model or the upfront purchase, you have to create the right experience to keep that customer from going somewhere else. Sure. The advocacy piece is more important than ever as well, oh, yeah. because you know where before uh, you know a happy customer would tell one person and an unhappy customer would tell ten. Uh, now you've got that amplified with with obviously social. the digital age and, and social. Yeah. So that customer nurturing, customer experience model, yep. um, you know, is is more important than it's ever been. Yeah, hundred um, percent. It's also, I mean, think about it logically. It's also the cheapest sale you'll ever make. When a buyer recommends, you know, your product to someone else, and someone comes and says, "I want that," yeah. um, you know, that's the cheapest sales force you'll ever employ.